as we're defining our route definitions, there's actually one thing that we can do to help ourselves in the future vastly cut down on refactor time anytime that we need to change one of our routes path. So we can give each individual route a specific name. And then as we'll cover in the next lesson, we can actually reference the route via that name and generate a URL specific to that route by the name anywhere within our application. So instead of referencing the path itself, we can reference the name and then Adonis will generate the path along with any query string route parameters that we need on that route just using the name. So the way that we go about defining a name for a route is we chain it off of our route definition as an extra method called as. And then within as all that we need to do is pass it whatever name we want to give it. So for this, it would probably be posts. And then we could do dot index because this is essentially the home or the index for our posts since it's going to list all of them out. And then using this name, we can actually generate out a URL specific for this route definition. So within our home page here, let's go ahead and do const posts URL as route. And then we can call make URL to create a URL using a route identifier, which we can use as the routes name. And then for right now, let's just go ahead and cancel out the welcome page and let's just return our posts URL. So let's give that a save. Let's open up insomnia here and let's send out a get request for our homepage. And there we go. You can see we get slash posts, which is the route for our post index page. We can do the same thing for all of these other routes as well. So we could do as posts. And then since this one is used to show a single post, we can call this one show. And then for this one, we'll do as and then since this one stores a single post within our database, we'll call this one store. And then for this one, since this one's updating, we'll call this one posts update. And then as posts dot destroy since that one is deleting. Cool. And then we could test this out. We will do uh, let's do this one here since it has a route parameter in it. So we'll do post dot show. And then the second argument to make URL is the parameter. So you can either do this as an array or an object. An array is going to be the order of the parameters as they're defined with a new URL. An object will just be a name value pair. I'm going to go with an object for this one. So we'll call this ID and let's just pass in one. So we can go ahead and save this open up insomnia again, send this off and we should get post one, which we do. So we'll get into generating URLs more in the next lesson. For now, we're going to move on to actually grouping these routes. So as you might have noticed between the last lesson and this lesson, I went ahead and cut all of these post routes back from normal functions into error functions so that we could fit all of these post definitions onto a single page here without needing to scroll up and down and so forth. So there's a couple of redundancies going on between each of these post routes. So first and foremost here, we have slash posts for all of them. And then we also have posts dot within all of their names. And we can use something called grouping to actually help cut back on both of those redundancies. So we can actually create a group by calling route dot group. And this will take a callback function. And then within the callback function, we just define all of the routes that we want to reside within this group. So in essence, we'll just move all of our post routes inside of the group. So now all of our posts are within a group. However, our group's not really doing anything groupy. We're not taking advantage of what the group can do yet. First, let's go ahead and get rid of the slash posts off of all of these route definitions. So off of our group, there's another method that we can chain called prefix. And what this will do is it will prefix our route path with whatever we define as this particular prefix. So in this case, we're going to want to do slash posts since that's what all of the route definitions within this group have in common for their route path. So that means for each of these individual sub route definitions, all that we need to do is whatever is after slash post. So for our index here, we could either just do an empty string or we can do a slash to make it a little bit easier to read. For this one, we would do just slash ID as our route parameter. The same thing as our index path here. So we can either do an empty string or just a slash. Same thing as our post show here and same thing as the last one right here as well. Okay. so. Second, we have the redundancy of all of our route definitions having posts dot within their name. And we can fix that up by giving our route as a whole a name. So we could do as and then just name this posts. Now, by default, Adonis is going to automatically delimit our group and sub route definition names with a dot. So at the end of the day, once we get rid of the posts within this route definition, the name is going to be the exact same as post.index because it's going to delimit our group name with whatever name we have defined for the actual route with a dot. So here we can get rid of post dot for each of these. Skipped over this one. There we go. And the one for destroy. So we can actually confirm that that's working 
by calling routes list within our terminal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my server and let's run node ace list routes. And we can see right here are the post routes that we have been working with within this lesson. You can see that the route path is exactly as we expect it to be. It's slash post, slash post ID, slash post, so on and so forth. And the name is as we expect it to be as well. So it's posts.index, post.show, post.store, post.update, post.delete, just as we had it whenever we were defining those individually, just now using the group to do it. Now we haven't gotten into these yet, but you can also use the group to define middleware, to define a namespace, to define subdomains, for these particular routes as well. And then just as we defined globally right here, we can also define our casters and validators and matchers for our routes directly off of the group as well. Now there is one thing to note here about naming groups. Uh, if you name the group, you're gonna have to give each of the individual routes within the group a name as well. That's to cut back duplication on routes. Another cool thing that we can do with groups is actually nest groups. So let's take this group here, let's cut it out. Let's define another group. Give it a callback, paste this one back inside, and let's give our outer group a name. So let's do as, and let's give this a name of app. Let's go ahead and give that a save. Let's open up our terminal, list out our routes. And now you can see that we have app appended to each of these routes as well. So one area that this might be really useful is if you have an API. So you can do, so let's create another group. We'll give this a prefix of API. We'll create another group inside of there. We'll give this one a prefix of our API version. So we'll do, let's say version one, and then we can do another group as well for our actual topic route. So this one would be prefix do posts, and then we can paste in uh, just a duplicate of our post routes up here just to see how this works. And then we can give each of these a name as well. So we can do as API, as version one, as posts just to see how this looks. So let's give that a save. Let's run node ace list routes again. And now you can see that we have a whole other slew of post routes here, except these ones are prefixed with API version one for each of those routes. And the name is also prefixed with API version one as well. So if you are separating your routes in a fashion where you're using separate files for them, so let's do routes and then we'll do API and then we can do version one. So now we have routes API version one, and then inside of there, we can do a new file called post.ts. And then we can actually extract this out and plop it in there. And then of course we need to import the route module in here. Give that a save, head back to our routes and import that. Import routes API version one posts. We could use that as a way to kind of help keep things separated as we version our application moving forward. So whenever it comes time to incrementing our API version, we can create a new folder with an API called version two. We can drop our posts into that version two, make any changes that we need. So we can call this one version two instead of version one, head back into our routes file. And then all, all that we need to do is flip the switch on the import to version two. And now our app would be using version two of our post API.